Welcome teachers, you all must be doing planning whenever you are going to your class. Sometimes you do plan on annual basis, sometimes you plan how you will go through when you will deliver a particular unit or a particular lesson. But many times what we do, we basically prepare a plan in our mind. It is always better that we should do it on paper. If we plan in advance, it is always help us in completing the content, identifying the methodology and delivering the desired content to the students. On discussing, to discuss on all these things, we are going to discuss on a topic called annual and unit planning. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh from School of Education, IGNU. Friends, when we are saying that we are going to plan, then Clark has defined it very beautifully what planning is. He defined that planning is a basic psychological process in which a person visualizes the future, the inventories, means and ends and constructs a framework to guide his or her future action. So, either we are doing annual planning or we are doing unit planning. We basically prepare a framework how we will proceed. What is an annual plan? Actually, an annual plan provides you an overview of the course in the curriculum. In the starting of your session, you are generally provided the syllabus of a subject. You are also uh, aware that how many classes you will take throughout the session or throughout the semester. Your syllabus basically contains the units which you will be teaching or you will take during the whole year. But when we plan it annually, we do not only consider the number of periods available with us, the syllabus of the course which we are going to teach. But we also consider all the activities which we will organize during the whole session. You may organize some curricular activities, you may organize some co-curricular activities. You also require some times to be given to the learners for their practice, for the exercises. You also conduct unit tests, annual tests, semester test, monthly test. You may give them some projects which they need to do outside of the classroom. So whatever activities you are planning in your course in the whole year, when you divide the time available with you, the periods available with you in the whole year and you include all the activities, means the classes to be taken, if there are practicals, the practicals to be organized, if there are visits, visits to be organized. If there are some projects, unit test, annual test, curricular activities, co-curricular activities, time for practice, time for exercise, project work. When you include all these things and you divide your time judiciously throughout the year and when you develop it in an organized way, then this is called an annual plan. When you are developing an annual plan, it is suggested to you that you should be ready by the very beginning of the academic year. Because slavers is being given to you in the starting of your academic session or academic year. So you plan an annual plan in the beginning of your academic session. When you plan your annual plan, you also categorize the units and the specific subject matter to be covered in each unit. So that you can decide that for which unit how many sessions you require. In a syllabus, if there are 4 units or 5 units or 10 units, every unit will not take equal time. For some units, you may require 10 sessions. For some units, you may require 5 sessions. For some unit, you may require 7 sessions. So when you organize the subject matter within the unit, in your unit plan, then when you plan it as an annual plan, you try to incorporate the sessions required for each unit. 
Sometimes the people who develop the annual plan more meticulously, they even also include the number of lesson plans even within the annual plans. With the annual plan, these will be the units for one unit, how many lessons they will deliver. So they also plan up to that extent. Also you should think that for which grade this annual plan is. The annual plan for 9th class will be different from an annual plan for 12th class. The annual plan for 7th class will be different from an annual plan to 11th class. So for which grade? Then in which month you will conduct what type of activity? How many hours you will spend on each lesson? So whenever you prepare your annual plan, you should include the number of scheduled classes or periods, the key learning goals of the subject and of the unit which need to be achieved at the end of the session. You also plan the major activities or events which are related to your course. It may be co-curricular activities, it may be curricular activities, it may be some project work, it may be some outside of the classroom activities. So if there are such activities, you also plan how many days you require in the whole academic year. But this planning you do for your own. You never share this planning with your students. But what is more refined process of planning when we plan up to the label of a unit and that is known as unit plan. So when we plan a unit plan, let us first discuss why we need a unit plan. Actually a unit plan help the teacher in planning the teaching and learning logically because in a unit plan you plan how you will proceed within the unit which content you will deal in first lesson which content you will deal in second lesson which content you will deal in last lesson so when you plan for a unit plan you prepare it properly that how you will proceed in your whole unit right the second thing when you develop a unit plan basically it is an opportunity to plan the whole unit in a comprehensive way because when we plan for lesson we take certain section of the content right that content you deal within 30 minutes 40 minutes or 45 minutes allotted to you but what will come before that lesson and what will come after that lesson? It is not the part of a lesson plan. For that you need a unit plan. So when you sit to develop your unit plan, you basically have the whole content in front of you. You identify the important concepts to be covered, the sub-concepts to be covered. You draw a logical sequence between these concepts and sub-concepts and decide that how you will go in the unit, which concepts, sub-concepts you will deal in first class, then in next class, then in next class. So when you plan the whole unit by identifying its all concepts and sub-concepts, put them together, arrange them in a logical sequence. That's why we say that when we plan a unit plan, it is a comprehensive plan. Unit plan also help us in arranging the subject matter thematically. Because themes are some important meaningful things under which we arrange our content. So when I am saying that you integrate the subject matter thematically, you basically decide about the whole theme which you will cover within the unit. You also provide a more detailed view of your teaching plan in an unit plan. Because when you plan for unit, I will show you some examples that when you plan for unit, you not only plan how you will proceed with the content, you also plan what type of teaching strategy you will adopt. You also plan what teaching method you will apply. You also plan what type of material you will use to explain the content. You also plan how you will give the opportunity to your learners to interact with you 
to interact with the content and to interact with the peers within the class. So a unit plan provides a detailed view of your whole teaching plan. And you know every unit has certain objectives. We basically plan to achieve those objectives. So when you have your unit objectives with you, you have your subject content with you, you decide what level of learning will take place and how you will assess the learning. So when you prepare a unit plan, you create a match between the objectives, the subject content, the learning process and the assessment strategies. So you cannot uh, plan each thing separately in vacuum. You cannot say, okay, today I will plan about the objectives of my unit. Then some other day you will plan about the content to be covered. No, content should be matched with the objectives. Then if objective is to develop understanding that what kind of learning strategy you will adopt. If objective is to develop some critical thinking skills, what kind of learning strategy to be adopt. So learning strategies are also basically guided by the objectives. Then whether that objective or those objectives have been achieved or not, to know it, you need a proper appropriate assessment strategy. So when we design a unit plan, we basically create a matching between, we develop a matching between objectives, subject content, learning strategies and assessment strategies. What is a unit? Because when I am talking about a unit planning, you may think what do we mean by unit? In textbooks, in some textbooks, the syllabus is arranged into units. In some textbooks, the syllabus is arranged into lessons. So what we as a teacher should consider a unit? A unit is basically a comprehensive series of related and meaningful activities. To achieve the people's purposes, so we develop a unit to achieve the people's purposes and how we provide them significant educational experiences so that your teaching learning can result in appropriate behavioral changes. This definition of unit was given by Morrison in 1961 whose unit approach is very famous and very much known. Because if you see the definition of unit given by Morrison, he emphasized on a comprehensiveness of related and meaningful activities by providing some significant educational experiences which can result in an appropriate behavioral changes. So when we think about a unit, it has some related concepts, related activities with certain objectives to bring certain changes in the behavior. So if this is the unit, then what is a unit plan? I already told you, unit plan basically includes the concepts and learning objectives to be taught in various lessons. And not only this, a unit plan reflects the interrelationship of concepts as well as the experiences and issues sometimes or often across the subject area. Why unit planning? What are the benefits of unit planning? Unit plan basically mapped around a central problem or purpose. So what is the purpose of dealing with a particular content or with a particular central problem? Unit plan is basically a map. Unit plan considers all the related concepts around the main theme of the unit. So you organize different concepts around the main theme. Unit plan gives you or it brings a continuity and comprehensiveness in planning and it includes learners participation. I told you when we were talking about annual planning, I told you that annual planning has nothing to do with learners participation. But when you plan for unit, you include how you how learners will participate in the delivery of the content for this particular unit. So it basically help you in developing your lesson plans. 
daily plans and also it guides the teacher i mean you to arrange the resources accordingly to the requirement why because if we plan daily a separate separate lesson plan in the morning today i am going to deal with this particular content then you will plan about the methodology then you will plan about the material required you may or may not have that material available with you at that time but if you plan a unit plan in advance you will are already knowing that on which date or in which day in which session which concept you will deal for that concept what kind of material you require so that you can arrange that re required material in advance it also helps unit plan also helps in translating the general goals into more specific objectives and it basically maintains a proper pace of teaching to complete a unit when you develop a unit plan and you decide in a unit how many lessons will be there how many periods you will take for which lesson suppose if you have decided for a unit there will be seven or eight unit lessons seven or eight lessons then you also decide how much or how many concepts you will deal in each lesson sometimes one one concept may require two lessons one for conceptual understanding one for practice practice and uh, practicals or numericals and all that so you keep a proper pace because you know you have already planned that how many lessons are required to deal with this unit so your pace is not disturbed and your syllabus is also get completed smoothly now the question comes how can you develop a unit plan so the first step of the unit plan is division of unit into concepts and sub concepts the next step is you identify the learning outcomes for each unit when you identify the learning outcomes you decide to achieve these learning outcomes what type of method you will apply what type of technique you will use in teaching learning you also plan how you will interact with your learner and how you will assess or evaluate the performance of your learners so let us see one format actually this is a blank format which i am going to show you for one unit how many topics and sub topics will be covered in one lesson you write in one column then for each topic and sub topic or at least for whole lesson you plan certain objectives or expected learning outcomes you can write either objectives or learning outcomes whichever you prefer to write to achieve those learning outcomes what type of activities you will organize what strategy you will adopt in that activity in that methodology in that strategy what will be the learning resources which you will use and how you will assess that particular unit that particular lesson or how you will be able to assure yourself that whatever you have planned has been achieved so that assessment strategy is also required nowadays people are using concept map as a very important tool for planning you can develop concept map by using various online softwares or by using paper and pencil in concept map what you do you basically link various concepts and their relationships with each other you write the main concepts involved in the unit on a paper then you write the sub concepts then how these concepts and sub concepts are related to each other what are their relationships when you develop this map you basically develop a holistic view of your unit that how you are going to deal with the unit when you have the whole holistic view of the unit with all concepts and sub concepts with you then you can distribute easily that which section which concept and sub concept which relationship you will deal in one uh, lesson what will be the next concept sub concepts and how it is will be related to the earlier one so you develop linkages between various lessons planned for the unit through concept map so i would suggest that you also use concept map as a tool for unit planning it is very efficient tool i can tell you because when you have a concept map in front of you 
you know the concepts the sub concepts and more important thing the relationship between those concepts and sub concepts the kind of relationship you want to establish the kind of relationship you want to explain the kind of relationship you wish that your learner should explore on the basis of these objectives you can plan the teaching strategy you can identify the resources you can arrange the sequence of the content and you can develop your assessment tools so concept map not only helps in identifying the linkages between concepts and sub concepts but it also helps you in planning your teaching strategies in identifying resources and in arranging the content to develop the assessment tools uh, you see this this is one example actually the title of the unit is atom so what a teacher has done he identified various concepts and sub concepts and in one lesson he decided he will deal with basic structure of an atom means the electron proton neutron and structure of nucleus these will be the main concept and sub concepts he or she will deal in a class now what are the learning outcomes or the objectives he decided that learners will be able to differentiate particles on the basis of electric charge means on which subatomic particle positive charge is there on which subatomic particle negative charge is there or on which subatomic particle there is no charge this is his or her expected learning outcome now because this is the learning outcome so what kind of activities a teacher can plan the teacher decided the activities to show the charges on the particles he also plan a role play of subatomic particle and the teacher used a 3d model of an atom to demonstrate various subatomic particles and their place in the nucleus and around the nucleus now see how the teacher has planned the assessment strategy the teacher is not going to ask only questions that which particle has the positive charge no the teacher decided to use a crossword puzzle for this the teacher will develop a crossword puzzle actually when we uh, do the unit planning and we decided the assessment strategies for different lessons or different topics we can use various types of assessment strategies it is not only paper pencil test at the end of the uh, unit which is not called a unit test unit test you also develop but whether a particular learning outcome has been achieved or not whether that particular topic that particular concepts or sub concepts have been understood by the learners or not to know it a teacher can plan different types of assessment strategy so this was the teacher's first lesson now what the teacher has done for the second lesson the teacher decided that in the second lesson she will deal with the electrons and the concept of valency so what are the sub concepts involved in it orbits distribution of elements bohr bury principle concept of valency now because bohr bury is a scheme through which electrons are filled in different uh, what we call orbits so what are the what is the expected learning outcome of this lesson the teacher decided that learner will be able to distribute the electron according to bohr bury scheme how this learning outcome can be achieved the teacher decided that she will organize a brainstorming session and discussion on possible structure of an atom before telling what is the actual structure of atom she also planned to give exercises on filling up the electrons in different orbits and also a role play so because different types of activities have been planned she may require different types of learning resources she require a model of nucleus and orbits she required play cards on electrons orbits and nucleus and she planned that for this she will use a unit test of 10 marks the third sub concept which she planned is the atomic models in the same unit called atom because the title of the unit is atom 
in the third lesson the topic and the sub concepts covered are atomic models thomson model rutherford model bohr model only three models if a learner is able to differentiate between these models the learning outcome will be achieved to show it teacher decided to demonstrate different atomic models and how because it is a very abstract concept of atomic models but animation can do you know wonders to explain this concept so teacher decided that she will use video animation of different atomic models and will ask learners to demonstrate by drawing pictures of different atomic models so this is her assessment strategy so what i try to say that let us take one more example and then we will compare the next is atomic numbers mass numbers these are also two important concepts because on the basis of these concepts the learner will be able to tell the concept of isotopes and isobars to deal with this concept the teacher decided that she will use the examples of different isotopes and isobars and give them some numerical practice for this she will use some video demonstrations she will use some daily life utilities of isotopes and isobars so that learner can link the concepts with their daily life and she will give a small project to explore the use of isotopes and isobars in different phases of life or in different activities so if you see from lesson 1 to lesson 4 the whole concept of atom was divided into four different sub concepts then for each sub concepts one lesson was planned for each lesson some learning outcome was decided for that learning outcome some activities or strategies were planned then accordingly the learning resources were identified then assessment strategies were planned you can see the variety in the assessment strategies you can see the variety in the learning resources identified you can see the variety in the academic activities or the strategies planned to deliver these concepts this is the beauty of an unit plan so friends if you will develop a unit plan i have already told you before developing unit plan you should develop an annual plan because annual plan will help you to decide how many units are there for which unit you will give how many lessons or how many days that overall planning will be more clearly represented in an unit plan when you develop an unit plan in the unit plan you will divide your unit into various concepts and sub concepts and as i have suggested you you should develop a concept map to locate the concepts and sub concepts on a paper or you can use any software and how these are related to each other so the interrelationships of different concepts and sub concepts you can draw after that you decide which concept and sub concept you will take first which you will take second which you will take third how many lessons are required and when you plan this you also plan that for each sub concept or concept what will be your expected learning outcome or objective then what will be the teaching learning strategy what type of material you require if you plan it in advance you can arrange it in advance before going to your class and how you are going to assess it so i hope that this annual planning and unit planning will help you to deal with the subject more effectively in your class and you will be able to provide a lot of opportunities for interaction for learning and for co-creation of knowledge for your learners thank you very much